Everybody. This is Christopher Brower here with Daily Motor and today we're driving the 2022 Hyundai Palisade Calligraphy all-wheel drive. This is Hyundai's largest SUV. It is a three-row SUV and this thing is completely specced out being that it is the calligraphy model and the fact that it has all-wheel drive. It's about 50 grand. In fact, MSRP comes in just below at about 49,800. And that surprised me when this thing showed up because after seeing these driving around on the road for a couple of years now, I was always under the impression that these were like sixty dollars to $65,000 SUVs. So after spending a little bit of time in one that's fully specced out and is just under the $50,000 mark, I've actually been pleasantly surprised with the way that this Palisade is. So let's go ahead and take a look inside. We'll start in the back here. Power tailgate, of course, being that this is the top of the line Palisade. And in the back, you'll find that Hyundai actually makes everything very convenient and easy for you. For one, with this third row seat folded down, you can see that we actually have a very flat surface back here for putting cargo. Also got a small compartment here, which houses your jack and your toolkit and everything but also for storing things under the floor of your Palisade if you would like. Just a nice little extra spot to utilize some extra storage space in the back here. And we'll demonstrate first with the second row. So as you can see here, if I hit the button, it'll fold that second row seat flat down. Now there is no power up function for our second row seats. We have to go around and manually put this seat back up but that's okay because it's easily accessible. As far as the third row seats go, they are completely power functioning. So if we hit our two buttons here, you can do them at the same time. You can fold up our third row seat here. Pop our headrests up and our third row seat is in action. Of course, still have access to this panel back here for extra storage while the third row seat is up. These also power fold down and I was nervous before I did this. I was like, oh, well, how do I put my headrest down? But you'll see, well, actually first, check this out. They recline, but once you're ready to put them down, folds its own headrests down into a flat position. There you go, check that out. And we're actually gonna put these back up because I wanna sit back in those third row seats and see how much room an adult would have in the back of this Palisade. Stick those back up, hit our button for our power tailgate there. It actually closes pretty quickly. I'm not sure there'd be enough time for your dog to run out if you had a dog back there. Even more power functions here in the back seat. Hit this button here and it folds that seat forward so you can more easily get in to the third row. Okay, and then pull this back to get it back into position. Now that is an all the way forward position on our third row. And over here is all the way back. So we'll try out both spots. But if you have someone in the second row that's a bit short, but I don't really know why you'd put a short person in the second row. But in this position, I do actually have quite a bit of leg room back here. Um, my knees are in my chest a little bit. But if I move over to the side where the seat is in a normal position where someone would normally be sitting in the second row, this is where it gets a little bit tight. So for the third row in this Palisade, I'd say really only fit for children. Funny enough, there are actually three seat belts back here. A little seat belt that extends here from the ceiling. So technically you could have three people back here, but three people would have to be small children because there's no way you could put three adults back here. But you've got four comfortable seats for adults at least, and the kids can stay entertained back here as they have a couple of USB ports. We've got plenty of cup holders, four, but overall pretty nice. We've got little speakers here for your uh, passenger talk, which we'll demonstrate once we're up there. All right, let's move up here to the second row through the middle of the captain's chairs. Oh, squeeze down here. I guess, honestly, in this, I could kind of sit in this position, but be more comfortable like this. 
All right, overall second row comfort is absolutely fabulous. These are very nice feeling seats. We do have this nice quilted leather on our seats and our door panels, since this is the calligraphy model. Nice seat back pockets. We've also got two cup holders on each door panel in the second row, another little cubby here, and of course another little cubby down here. It's not as large as you'd hope, but considering the fact that you have two cup holders and a little pocket here, I think that makes it okay. We've got sunshades here as well. They aren't power, but that's okay. They're pretty light and they snap into place fairly easily. Otherwise, we do also have our own climate control panel back here, as well as heated and cooled second row seats, which is fabulous for a car that's under 50 grand. Pretty nice feeling climate controls back here. If you have some pesky children that normally sit back here, you can lock them out from the main infotainment display if you don't want them to be messing with the rear climate. A couple of different plugs down here as well, a normal 12 volt, as well as a 150 watt wall outlet to plug in things that you'd plug into the wall, I suppose. And if those aren't enough for you, you also have little USB ports here on each front seat. So whichever plug that you would like, you can have it in the back of the Palisade. Overall, great place to be. And now that I'm looking up, I'm reminded also, this Palisade calligraphy has a micro suede headliner, which as you can see, has been touched by many automotive journalists before me. I haven't actually touched this yet, but it's got tons of little fingerprints in it. So if you do have children, which automotive journalists are kind of like that, you can see they, they put a lot of fingerprints in, in the top of it and you can fix this by oh, probably this way. You can smooth it out. You see that? You can get rid of all of the fingerprints while well, mostly this you have to go this way for this one. So suede headliners or Alcantara, they're nice if you don't touch them, but this one has been touched quite a bit. In fact, should I leave my mark on this somewhere? Which way? This way? Yes, there we go. Now you've got my fingerprints or my finger marks in the headliner. <laughs> Otherwise up here, a couple of vents and then some map lights here as well to read your maps, I suppose. Handles and hooks as well for your fine pressed linen jackets. But otherwise, just a really nice spacious place in this Palisade and can comfortably haul one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven people, four adults, three children. So with all that out of the way, why don't we move up to the front seat and see what this Palisade's all about up there. Nice Palisade logo here on your door sill, a nice aluminum material there. This door panel is also very nice. This quilted material, of course, is carried up front. Really nice aluminum Harman Kardon speaker covers. And just the overall look of everything on that door panel is really nice. I dig the trim. I dig this lower trim too that surrounds our window and mirror switches. And once you're up front, you're greeted by even more quality. This is a really nice steering wheel, although I was a little bit thrown off when I got into it because this Hyundai badge on the steering wheel is quite large. I feel like every other Hyundai I've driven has had a significantly smaller emblem here on the airbag slash horn, but maybe I'm just losing my mind, I don't know. But if you can get past the quite large badge, the steering wheel is actually very nice. We've got perforated leather here on the side, mounted paddle shifters in the back, and tons of buttons here to control our cluster as well as our radar cruise and phone calls, volume, voice command, and a couple of other things. The cluster is fully digital. You can change what you want to have in the middle by pressing this button here. You can see which wheels are controlling your all-wheel drive. You can see your radar cruise and have your all-wheel drive over here on the side. You can switch this menu with this button here. Very customizable menu. I've been having mine so I can see my little palisade here in the middle and then my all-wheel drive function there on the right. All right, center here, we have quite a few buttons, which I love. I love having physical controls. Look at this drive mode selector that lights up what mode you're in. When you go around here, you can also lock your all wheel drive. And being that this is a Hyundai, of course, it changes the look of your gauges, depending on which mode you're in. Sport always gives you a very sporty look there. Eco mode is green. and then Snow Comfort and Smart are all the same. Otherwise though, buttons for our parking sensors, camera, view, auto start, stop, heated and cooled seats up front as well as a heated steering wheel. 
and just a really nice array of buttons. It's all very straightforward and easy to use. Yes, it may look like there's a lot of buttons, but in the grand scheme of things, this is not a lot of buttons. This is the amount of buttons that you need in a car, and everything just makes sense. We do have wired Apple CarPlay in this Palisade, though it doesn't take up the whole screen. We have kind of like a 60-40 split here, 60 for your Apple CarPlay and 40 for just the normal Hyundai subscreen over here on the side. We can have a couple of different things here, quick access to your passenger talk. Talking to rear passengers. Wow, you can hear me echo there. Talking to my third row children that are in the back seat or drunk house guests or something. Whoever you're driving around, you can talk to them and then you hit end here and it stops. Really nice chill home screen as you see in every Hyundai and Kia product. Having this quick access to passenger talk is actually very convenient. Even when you're in Apple CarPlay, it's nice to have that option. The most chill function I've been using actually is just this nice weather display next to my Apple CarPlay screen. And otherwise, pretty nice infotainment. If you're interested in an in-depth review of the sound system, the Harman Kardon system in here, as well as the infotainment, make sure you check out Charlie's video on that. Um, otherwise, what else? I mean, it's just a really nice place to be in this interior. And, you know, think about other things for 50 grand. What would 50 grand get you in a Mercedes or a BMW? Probably wouldn't be as nice as this Hyundai Palisade. All right, let's go ahead and take this Palisade out on the road and see what it's like to drive. Push button shifter that I don't really mind, honestly, in this because it just fits along with all the other buttons in here and they make the shifter silver so you don't accidentally hit those when you're trying to hit anything else. 360 camera as well as a swiveling reverse camera. Make sure you don't crash into anything in your Hyundai Palisade. And he's got you covered. All sorts of cameras and they actually stay on when you're going forward. So if you wanna check your parking job, you can do so. Quick access to that as well over here. You can just hit the camera button. You don't have to be in reverse to view the cameras. Silky Smooth V6 in this Hyundai Palisade. That is, of course, Hyundai's 3.8 liter naturally aspirated V6. About 291 horsepower and 262 foot-pounds of torque, which is plenty of power for this Palisade. I've grown to appreciate V6s quite a bit more after driving some of these three-row SUVs that are powered by four-cylinder engines. It's nice to just have the smoothness. Ah, yes, I must have crossed the line slightly over there. <laughs> Lane keep assist yelling at me. It's nice, though, to have the smoothness of a V6 and not have to listen to a four-cylinder just revving itself out. Like, ring, 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 ring. Nope. Nice smoothness of a V6 under the hood of the Palisade, and I am glad about that. And behind that V6 is a very nice eight-speed automatic. And... The powertrain in this car is nothing sophisticated, nothing even really modern. Just a naturally aspirated V6 with an eight-speed automatic traditional transmission. And that's nice. It makes for a nice smooth driving experience, which I really do appreciate. And even around corners, oh yeah, <laughs> this thing kind of hustles. It actually corners really flat, which is surprising. You wouldn't expect something like this to handle as nicely as it does. It's very surprising. You can have your Palisade at the ragged edge in comfort and style. <laughs> oh man. Overall ride quality, it's beautiful. I mean, this thing just rides in such a way. That was a big pothole we just went over and I barely even felt it. We'll do the main test up here in just a second. We're coming up on the rough road slash rough ride section here. I mean, truly one of the best I've ever felt through there. The ride on this thing is just sublime. See our all wheel drive indicator there indicating when you're under full power, this thing puts all of its power to all four wheels where as when you're just cruising, you can see it's giving power mainly to the front wheels. 
It is a very quiet cabin. It may not seem that way today because it's quite windy out. You can hear some of that wind. If I had to pick one thing that I don't really love about the interior of the Palisade is that the seating position is a little bit high for me. I got into this earlier this week and I was pressing down on the seat control thinking I was doing something wrong, but nope, this is as low as the seat goes and I still feel like I'm sitting on top of this Palisade. And it is understandable. This is a three-row SUV. It's not a sports car. I'm, I'm not going to be sitting down into it like a Porsche carbon fiber seat or something like that but I would prefer to sit just a little bit lower in the Palisade. Also, we don't have a power adjustment for our steering wheel. When you're up in that $50,000 range, it is a little bit of a head scratcher to think about, well, why don't I have a power adjustment steering wheel in this car? And I'm mentioning this for Charlie because it's his special favorite thing to rag on cars for not having a power adjustment for the steering wheel. So Charlie, if you're watching, you're welcome for mentioning that. Oh my gosh, this thing, it grips, it really grips. Wow, 54 coming out of there. <laughs> and then plenty of power from that 3.8 liter V6 to get up to a comfortable highway speed. Probably not really Hyundai's main intention to make the Palisade handle as well as it does, but seriously, you can, you can hustle this thing and it's actually quite nice to drive. Let's try out these paddle shifters. There's no button down there to put you into manual mode. Well, let me grab second. Nope. There's second. Okay, so obviously we don't have super fast reactions from those paddles. But if you want manual control, they are there for you. Actually, I should probably try them out in sport mode, right? Because that was just in comfort. Let's see how it acts in sport. Yeah, it seems to be about the same reaction there in sport. Yeah, that doesn't change anything. Well then you want just a slightly more aggressive driving mode, sport mode is there for you. And I really like the feel of this dial as well. You can also hold this paddle and it puts you back into drive. Or you can tap drive down there on the shifter, puts you back into automatic. So since we're getting to the end of our drive here, let's talk about price. As I mentioned earlier, this is the absolute top of the line Hyundai Palisade calligraphy all wheel drive which puts this thing at just about 50 grand. But if you don't want all of the luxuries and everything, every bell and whistle, as boomers like to say, you can have a Palisade for just about 34 grand, which is pretty cheap for an SUV this size. There is an SE, an SEL, a Limited, and of course, the Calligraphy, just a normal trim tier segment. Of course, with the SE being mid thirties, the Calligraphy, being about 50. In fact, the calligraphy starts at about 47,000. I think it's nice though that Hyundai offers this luxury trim on the Palisade and their other SUVs because some people don't care about having a German driving experience in their car. And as you saw me hustling this thing around, it actually, <laughs> it, it drives pretty properly. I mean, this thing can get the job done and do it well. So, I mean, of course you don't have the straight line speed that you would have in a comparable German car, but 290 some horsepower in the chassis of this car, they're actually very nice. Auto start, stop kicking in there. A physical button here to turn that off, it's nice. So overall then, I really enjoy the Hyundai Palisade. It's a nice option for people buying in this segment that don't wanna spend a gazillion dollars on a German counterpart that has really similar options and luxuries. I mean, shoot, nice leather, heated, cooled seats, heated steering wheel, a nice infotainment display, a fully digital cluster. I've got lane keep assist, I've got radar cruise, you've got heated and cooled second row seats, power folding third row seats. I think this thing looks really premium, as I mentioned earlier. Seeing these on the road, they look like much more expensive vehicles than they are. And this car is also really just a testament to Hyundai and Kia just stepping up their quality within the last five, 10 years to being a really reputable brand. 
Not to mention the 10 year, 100,000 mile powertrain warranty that you get with these cars as well. So in my opinion, a pretty smart buy this Hyundai Palisade would be. If you're between this and a Kia Telluride, eh, I mean, it's really just a looks preference at that point because they do a lot of the same things. In fact, they're pretty much the same car. So the Hyundai Palisade feels like it's more trying to be a Mercedes on the inside. I've got more Mercedes vibes in here than you do in the Telluride, whereas the Telluride is more of a, a muscular look. It is more mocking a Land Rover. So it depends what your vibe is. They drive pretty much the same. But looks wise, if you want a budget Mercedes, get the Palisade. If you want a budget Land Rover, Range Rover, get the Telluride. Overall though, just a solid choice and a car that does everything very well for a fraction of the price of a German counterpart. Actually, check this one other thing out that I love that Hyundai puts in their cars. When you put your turn signal on, it shows you your blind spot. And you're, if you're thinking, oh no, I've lost my RPM gauge, you haven't because it's got a little display at the top that tells you your RPMs. Same for this side, tells you your speed, shows you your blind spot. Cool stuff that they had. Hyundai, Kia, and Genesis always have good driver aids like that. It's one of my favorite things about these cars. It's even got comfort access. Check that out. All we need is the comfort access steering wheel too, and that would just complete our package. All right, guys. Well, that's going to conclude our drive today of the Hyundai Palisade Calligraphy all-wheel drive. Comment down below what you think. Would you have a Palisade? I think it's a really, really solid option in this current market that a lot of people, especially in Michigan, that just drive around in Ford Explorers or Chevy Traverses will just not even consider. And that's a shame because this is a very, very solid contender that people should just go out and drive and experience. So overall, good car. All right, everyone. Well, thank you so much for watching. This has been Christopher Brower with Daily Motor, and as always, drive on. Mm -hmm.